Peggy Guggenheim Museum, Venice, 2023. Important artists and their artworks. Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso was born in Malaga, Spain, in 1881. His father was an artist and art professor who gave Pablo art lessons. He began drawing and painting when he was nine years old. When he was 13, he moved to Barcelona and he went to the School of Fine Arts there. Three years later, his father decided to send him to Madrid's Royal Academy of San Fernando, Spain's top art school. Picasso didn't like formal instruction and soon stopped going to classes. He loved going to the Prado Museum to see and learn from paintings by famous Spanish painters. In 1900, Picasso went to Paris and met many of the famous artists who lived there. He and Georges Braque invented Cubism. They painted figures that were made up of cubes, spheres, cylinders, cones and other geometrical shapes. Cubists wanted to show the most important parts of the things they painted. They wanted to show all the sides of an object in the same picture. Their paintings became more and more abstract. A naturalistic image can only represent an instant of perception. It takes place from only one point of view and captures only a moment. But with cubism, there are several points of view and the artist needs more time to observe and represent the object. And you cannot understand a cubist painting in a second. You must analyze its individual parts and mentally reconstruct them. You need time to appreciate it. His style developed from the Blue Period to the Rose Period to the artwork Les Demoiselles d'Avignon and he arrived to Cubism. He created oil paintings, sculpture, drawings, stage designs, collage and architecture. He also wrote plays and poetry. Picasso was very famous and he became very rich. In 1936, the Spanish Civil War profoundly affected Picasso and he expressed himself in the painting Guernica. He died in 1973 in Mougins, France. The Poet Oil on Canvas The poet was painted in 1911. It is a clear example of analytic cubism. Here, abstraction is so extreme that objects are very difficult to recognize. The human form is deconstructed and reconstructed using straight and curved lines in a pyramid. The small circle at the top can be the eye, connected to the long line of the nose and a curved shape of a moustache under it. You can then guess a chin, a pipe, a neck, a torso 
and the arms of a chair. Picasso seemed to destroy the world into squares and triangles and reassemble it in a new way to show all the sides of objects and figures at once. It is a multiple view, as if he moves around his models or the objects to make a synthesis of them. The volumes become lines, planes, light and color. Giorgio de Chirico. Giorgio de Chirico was born in Greece in 1888. His parents were Italian. His father worked in Greece. He studied art in Athens, in Germany and in Italy. In 1911, he went to Paris and met Pablo Picasso, who admired him. De Chirico was influenced by some philosophers who said that the physical world doesn't show reality as it is and that there is another world beyond the experience of the senses, a world which you can reach through dreams and images. So De Chirico wanted to find a new reality, inside or outside the existing one. He tried to find a new perspective and see everyday objects in a new way. During the First World War, he was in a military hospital and met another famous painter, Carlo Carrà. Together, they developed a style called metaphysical painting. This style wanted to show an alternative reality and go beyond what we can see. The metaphysical artists offered new aspects of the world which we don't usually see. In their paintings, you can find deserted squares, sad mannequins, sharp shadows, solitary statues, like inexplicable enigmas. De Chirico painted familiar objects, but placed them into unexpected places. He used a realist and very detailed style, but he wanted to produce a feeling of disturbance and mystery. He wanted to make the viewer search for hidden meanings under the surface, the virtual beyond the actual images, a world beyond physical reality, a metaphysical world. The current of metaphysical art didn't last long, but it influenced the following surrealist painters like René Magritte and Salvador Dali. In the last part of his life, de Chirico dedicated himself to stage design and wrote essays, novels and an autobiography. He died in Rome in 1978. The Red Tower, 1913, Oil on Canvas. In this painting, there is an irrational perspective, many different light sources, two long shadows. The square is silent. There are no people or events. You can see a part of an equestrian monument, maybe the statue of King Carlo Alberto in Turin. Time seems to stop. What happened before? What is going to happen? 
The cuticle wants to show the moment when we feel as we are out of time, stepping into a dream, and we see things in new and different ways. Rene Magritte Rene Magritte was born in Belgium in 1898. Magritte started drawing lessons when he was 12. He went to the Art Academy in Brussels when he was 18. When he was 25, he saw one of Giorgio de Chirico's paintings and his life changed. He wanted to paint psychological landscapes, not real ones. He moved to Paris and met other surrealist painters like Salvador Dalí and Juan Miró. Surrealism began as a philosophical movement that said that we can find truth in the world only through the subconscious mind and dreams, not through logical thinking. It began in the 1920s in France. Like metaphysical art, surrealists considered the unconscious and the dream as creative forces that must be liberated in the artistic process. They wanted to show the importance of imagination, the creative benefits of chaos, and the curiosity that led them to explore their secret dreams and desires. They said that when you dream, you cannot control what happens. Images from the past come to your mind and form new ideas. Surrealist artworks often seem to have little sense for this reason. Magritte wanted people to look at ordinary things in different ways. He sometimes painted familiar objects in strange places. He opened a debate about the difference between reality, a pipe for example, and its representation. He showed reality in fragments, like life was after two world wars. People have lost their identity. Everything was in pieces, suspended in time. Things that were not things, days which were also nights. But he said that everything can be understood through dreams and poetry, the only possible realities. Magritte died in 1967 in Brussels. Empire of Light, 1953-54 oil on canvas. This painting is about the composition of opposites, the acceptance of the absurd in life. He made different paintings about this topic. A dark nocturnal street scene is set against a clear blue sky spotted with some clouds. With this fantastic element, the paradoxical combination of day and night, René Magritte upsets normal life. Sunlight, usually the source of light, here causes the confusion and unease traditionally associated with darkness. The luminosity of the sky makes the darkness below even more impenetrable than in a normal context. The bizarre subject is treated in an impersonal, very precise technique, typical of veristic surrealist paintings. Joanna Migdal. Joanna Migdal was born near London in 1958 and studied art there. Then 
she learned how to be a sculptor working at a studio with two artists for seven years. One day, someone asked her to make a sundial and she loved it very much. It was sculpture, engineering, metalwork, mathematics and calligraphy all together. After 25 years, she still makes sundials for important public institutions or for private individuals all over the world. A sundial is a device that can tell you what time it is depending on where the sun casts its shadow on the sundial. It is made up of two parts, a flat round plate and a stick called a gnomon. The gnomon casts a shadow on the plate and shows the time. As the day passes, the gnomon's shadow moves around the dial. Every hour, it falls on a new hour line. Sundials are the oldest known instruments for telling the time. They can be made of metal, wood, stone or other materials. 45 Sundial 2017 Bronze When the Peggy Guggenheim Museum bought a small garden near the building, they asked Joanna Migdal to design a sundial in 2015. She visited the place to find a position touched by the sun in summer and in winter. When she came back to her studio, she decided to create a cubist sculpture that was a timekeeper and a memorial to Peggy Guggenheim. Then she made a small model of the sundial and took it to Venice. There she made a full-size cardboard model and wanted the paving lines to follow the north-south line to be part of the solo sculpture. Two years later she made the final bronze sculpture and engraved the dials. Then the museum staff fixed it on a marble base and positioned it in the garden. The sculpture has got a series of sundials. Their gnomons are in line with the North Star. The upper part is dedicated to Peggy. Its lines show the date of her birth and death. The polar dial, the bigger one, shows the time in Venice all year round. The dial beneath it is only touched by the sun between the autumn and spring equinoxes when the sun is low. Questionnaire 1. When and where was Pablo Picasso born? And when did he die? 2. What did Picasso do when he lived in Madrid? 3. How can you describe the current of Cubism? 4. Why do you need time to understand a Cubist painting? 5. How did Picasso's style develop? 6. What was his production as an artist? 7. How did he react to the Spanish Civil War? 8. What is the painting the poet about? 9. What elements can you see in this painting? 10. Why did he want to reassemble the world he saw? 11. What is your impression of this painting? 12. When and where was Giorgio de Chirico born and when did he die? 13. Where did he study art? 
14. Who admired him in Paris? 15. What happened during the First World War? 16. How can you describe metaphysical painting? 17. What are the usual elements in a metaphysical painting? 18. What did the Kiriko want to produce? 19. Who did metaphysical painting influence? 20. Describe the painting The Red Tower. 21. What is this painting's relationship with time? 22. What does the Kiriko want to show in his paintings? 23. What is your impression of this painting? 24. When and where was Rene Magritte born and when did he die? 25. How can you describe the current of surrealism? 26. What did surrealist artists want to show? 27. Why is it difficult to find a sense in their paintings? 29. Who did Magritte meet when he lived in Paris? 30. What can you see in the painting Empire of Lights? 31. Why is this painting paradoxical? 32. What technique did Magritte use to paint it? 33. What is your impression of this painting? 34. When and where was Joanna Mictel born? 35. How long did she work to learn to be a sculptor? 36. Why did she love making sundials? 37. What is a sundial and how does it work? 38. What did the museum do when they bought a new garden? 39. What did Joanna Migdal decide to do after her first visit to the museum? 40. How was the evolution of this artwork? 41. How did she want the paving lines of the garden to be and why? 42. How was the sculpture positioned? 43. What does the polar dial show? 44. When does the sun touch the dial beneath it? 45. What is your impression of this sculpture?